Good day, everyone. For today's topic, me and my groupmates will be discussing about the placentation, gestation, and parturition. Are you familiar with these terms? But first, let me present to you the contents of my report. This will start with introduction, followed by the definition of gestation and placenta classification. Placenta layer. We will also look into the diffuse, zonary, discoid, and cotyledonary placenta. And last is the classification. To start gestation is the period wherein the female is pregnant. The word gestation means an act of carrying or being carried. During that time, the placenta is formed. Ring a bell. Placenta is an endocrine organ of metabolic interchange between the conceptus and the dam. It is being composed of a fetal component which is derived from modifications of the uterine endometrium. It provides a huge role in secreting the hormones that are responsible in the maintenance, maintenance of pregnancy, stimulation of the maternal mammary gland, and ensuring the fetal growth. To which we will move into the parturition, which is the giving birth to a young brought upon by the secretion of fetal corticoids. It has three stages, which includes the initiation of myometrial contractions, expulsion of fetus, and expulsion of the fetal membranes. To further our knowledge about placentas, did you know that placentas are classified according to the distribution of chorionic villi? This chorionic villi are small, finger-like projections which can be in the form of diffuse, zonary, discoid, and cotyledonary. A good example of an animal with diffuse placenta are pigs. It has a uniform distribution of chorionic villi that cover the surface of the chorion. Dogs and cats, on the other hand, have zonary placentas, which have a band-like zone of chorionic villi. Did you know that in rodents and primates, the discoid placentas are present? It forms a regionalized disc. Lastly, the ruminants have cotyledonary placenta with numerous discrete button-like structures. In addition to the placental classification, it can also be based in the microscopic appearance of the placental layer. Epitheliochorial six layers, endotheliochorial five layers, hemochorial three layers. The figure shows the diffuse placenta of the cell, which consists of many chorionic villi distributed over the entire surface of the chorion. They penetrate into the endometrium, forming the fetal and maternal interface. Vessels from each chorionic villus merge and eventually form large vessels. The next figure shows the diffuse placenta of the mare, which consists of many microcotyledons distributed over the entire surface of the chorion. These microcotyledons are the site of fetal and maternal exchange. The zonary placenta consists of three distinct zones: a transfer zone, a pigmented zone, and a relatively non-vascular zone, the allantocrine. In the zonary placenta. A band of tissue forms around the conceptus where nutrient transfer occurs. The discoid placenta consists of a round patch of chorionic tissue that forms the fetal and maternal interface. Vessels from the exchange zone merge to form the umbilical vessels that supply the fetus with blood. Next, the cotyledonary placenta, in which the cow and giraffe have a convex shape, while the sheep and goat have concave. Moving on, we can see here in the photo. The placental classification based on separation between fetal and maternal blood supplies. We have endotheliochorial, epitheliochorial, and hemochorial. The placenta is a major endocrine organ. During pregnancy, it is an organ that develops in the uterus during pregnancy. A metabolic exchange serves as a secondary function. Access to both through hormones from the placenta, the circulation of both the fetus and the mother the placenta secretes hormones that can stimulate ovarian function maintain pregnancy influence fetal growth stimulate mammary function assist in parturition equine chorionic gonadotropin ecg pregnant mare serum gonadotropin pmsd produced by the endometrial cups of the placenta endomerial cups are a transient placental endocrine gland they begin producing egg at the time of attachment of the conceptus to the endometrium. The relationship between the function of the endometrial cups in the mare and the synthesis of egg 
Equine chorionic conidotropin acts as a luteotropin and provides a stimulus for maintenance of the primary corpus luteum. ECG is responsible for controlling the formation and maintenance of supplementary accessory corpora lutea. Figure 14 to 6. Production of equine chorionic conidotropin ECG is closely related to the weight of the endometrial cups. Endometrial cups EC are seen here in a U-shaped configuration. The fetus F is surrounded by the amnion not visible. The membrane indicated by arrows is the allantichorion. This specimen was removed from a mare at 50 days of gestation. The production of HCG and progesterone during gestation in the pregnant woman. Human chorionic conidotropin peaks at about 2.5 months of gestation, and then declines. This period of time is critical for maintenance of pregnancy because the corpus luteum assumes primary responsibility for progesterone secretion at about 2.5 to 3 months of gest. Shin the placenta begins to assume the primary responsibility for progest, terran secretion, and continues this role until the time of Parturition. HCG increases slightly between months 6 and 9 because of the increased placental mass. The placenta secretes progesterone and estrogens. Progesterone is obligatory for early embryonic development because it provides the stimulus for elevated secretion by the endometrial glands. The peak of estradiol in most species signals the early preparatorian period. Figure 14 to 9. Progesterone profiles in various pregnant females. Another one is the gestational length and time of placental takeover for progesterone production in various species. Parturition is a complex cascade of physiologic events. So, parturition is defined as the process of giving birth. The parturition specifically has three stages and starts with the initiation of myometrial contractions, where it suppresses or removes the progesterone block that causes cervical changes, mainly cervical dilation that allows the fetus to deliver or expel, and ends with the delivery or expulsion of fetal membranes. Labor typically begins at some point when the fetus is considered full term or occurs at the end of the gestation period. This table shows the stages and duration of various species. We can see that mares have the shortest stage 1 duration, with only 1 to 4 hours. At this stage, the mare starts to move into position as the cervix and birth canal begin to dilate. Restless behavior and frequent transitions from lying to standing are signs that may or may not be noticeable followed by stage 2 fetal expulsion that takes 12 to 30 minutes, where the mare has a fully dilated cervix and the foal moves through the birth canal until fully expelled. This will be followed by stage 3 fetal membrane expulsion. Expulsion of the fetal membrane's placenta occurs approximately 1 hour post foaling. The fetus initiates stage I of parturition. If the pressure in uterus continues to increase it allows the offspring rotates so that the front feet and head are positioned to the posterior of the dam to ensure proper delivery in order to avoid dystocia or difficult in birth. Next, the expulsion of fetus or stage 2 requires strong myometrial and abdominal muscle contractions. This myometrial contractions is accompanied by the level of estradiol that continues to increase with the elevation of PGF to alpha. The contracting uterus begins to push the fetus toward the cervix by applying pressure to the cervix. This pressure on the cervix is caused by increased myometrial contractions. It is also accompanied by the bi-abdominal muscle contractions of the dam that further aid in expulsion of the fetus. Last, the expulsion of fetal membranes or stage 3 requires myometrial contractions. Myometrial contractions continue after expulsion of the fetus although they are not as strong.
These contractions are responsible for expelling the placenta. The fetal hypothalamo-pituitary adrenal axis plays an important role for the initiation of parturition and or which facilitate fetal maturation in most mammalian species, including humans. The fetal hypothalamus-pituitary adrenal or HPA axis is crucial to the mechanisms that regulate fetal preparedness for extrauterine life and before it becomes too large to pass through the birth canal. It determines the timing of labor as it produces a surge of cortisol during the week before parturition. Also, the fetal pituitary stimulates the secretion of adrenal corticoids from the fetal adrenal cortex and causes major event to occur. The elevation of the fetal corticoids surge a cascade of events that dramatically alter the dam's endocrine condition. Thus, fetal hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis and the release of cortisol are the key events directly involved in the initiation of labor in those species. The endocrine changes that cause two major events to occur due to the increase of cortisol are, first is the removal of the myometrial progesterone block, enabling myometrial contractions to begin, progesterone block is known to suppress myometrial contraction and maintain pregnancy. The endocrine change happens due to the elevation of cortisol that activates placental steroidogenic enzyme systems such as the I7-alpha-hydroxyprogesterone that is converted from progesterone by the enzyme I7-alpha-hydroxylase, leading to the elimination of progesterone block causing the estrogens elevated prior to parturition. In addition, the second endocrine change that happens enables the increase of reproductive tract secretions, particularly by the cervix. This figure shows the conversion of progesterone to estradiol. The elevation of fetal corticoids secreted from the fetal adrenal cortex causes the fetal corticoids to activate 17-alpha-hydroxylase, 17 to 20 desmolase, and aromatase, which convert progesterone to estradiol. This conversion removes the progesterone block to myometrial activity. As we all know, progesterone block is known to block or suppress the myometrial contraction and maintain pregnancy. Thus, removal of progesterone block induces the myometrial activity, specifically the myometrial contraction. So, in addition to converting progesterone to estradiol, Fetal corticoids also causes the placenta to synthesize PGF2-alpha. The synthesis of PGF2-alpha helps abolish the progesterone block. As both estradiol and prostaglandin become elevated, the myometrium becomes increasingly more active and begins to display noticeable contractions. This diagram shows the cascade of events prompted by fetal cortisol. In this diagram, we can see the fetal ACTHS or fetal adrenal corticoids. The fetal hypothalamic pituitary adrenal or HPA causes the fetal adrenal cortex to secrete these adrenal corticoids and sets in motion major events that drama tickly alter the dam's endocrine condition. Thus, the fetal hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis and the release of cortisol or adrenal corticoids are the key events directly involved in the initiation of labor in most species. In addition, the elevation of fetal corticoids secreted from the fetal adrenal cortex causes the fetal corticoids to activate 17-alpha-hydroxylase, 17 to 20 desmolase, and aromatase, which convert progesterone to estradiol or E2 which we can see in the diagram. The conversion of progesterone to estradiol or E2 results in the removal of the progesterone block to myometrial activity. As we all know, progesterone block is known as the blocker of myometrial contractions and maintains pregnancy. Moreover, in converting progesterone to estradiol, fetal corticoids also cause the placenta to synthesize PGF2-alpha. The synthesis of PGF2-alpha helps abolish the progesterone block. The PGF2-alpha also causes the corpus luteum of pregnancy to regress, facilitating the decline in progesterone. The drop in progesterone in some species is brought about both by the conversion of progesterone into estradiol and by the luteolytic process brought about by PGF2-alpha. Therefore, this luteolytic process or luteolysis is structural demise of the corpus luteum, which is preceded by loss of the capacity to synthesize and secrete progesterone. PGF2-alpha also stimulates the production of relaxin. Relaxin causes a softening of the connective tissue in the cervix and promotes elasticity of the pelvic ligaments. 
Thus, this hormone prepares the birth canal by loosening the supportive tissues so that the passage of the fetus can occur with relative ease. As both estradiol and prostaglandin levels rise, the myometrium becomes more active and starts to contract in a noticeable way, and as the level of estradiol continues to increase with the elevation of PGF to alpha, the contracting uterus begins to push the fetus toward the cervix by applying pressure to the cervix. This pressure on the cervix is caused by increased myometrial contractions that activate pressure-sensitive neurons located in the cervix that synapse in the spinal cord and eventually synapse with oxytocin-producing neurons in the hypothalamus. This oxytocin facilitates the myometrial contraction and is again initiated by estradiol and by PGF2-alpha. The other effect of estradiol elevation prior to parturition is that it initiates secretory activity of the reproductive tract, particularly the cervix, and again, as the estradiol increases, the cervix and vagina begin to produce mucus. This mucus washes out the cervical seal of pregnancy, thoroughly lubricates the cervical canal and the vagina, and enables the fetus to exit the reproductive tract with relative ease. That's all. Hope you learned something. Thank you everyone.